Hi, my name is Kendall Taubert. I am majoring in psychology with a minor in sociology here at Texas A&M University Kingsville. And today I will be going over the benefits of being in a nuclear family. So what is a nuclear family? A nuclear family structure consists of two parents that live with their children under a single household. In these families, the parents are almost always married. The children get to grow up with their siblings and the parents are physically around to see the children grow up and mature. So the question is, does being raised by two, two adults in a nuclear family actually give you more advantages in life? So let's start with the problem. Why is not being in a nuclear family seen as bad? While there's nothing wrong with being part of a non-nuclear family, you can always argue the disadvantages. Of course, a single mother is more than capable of raising an outstanding citizen, but that doesn't mean it's the best option. Take a second to think about any single parents you know, and then compare their situations and how different it would be if they had a spouse to go through all this with having the different incomes, that kind of support, the kids having two people to look up to, etc. Having both parents in a child's life can make a huge difference. Um, so what about the history of it all? If you take a look back to the 1800s, the majority of people were farmers and using your kids as labor was not uncommon in any way. And it was actually the norm to have eight plus kids who worked on the farm for you. Um, the families would usually extend out to aunts, uncles, grandparents, all living on the same farm, including things like servants or people like servants, their farm hands, apprentices, and even slaves. And like I said, all on the same farm and sometimes even under the same roof. Um, these types of families are referred to as corporate families and corporate families are designed to help a business succeed. And during the 1800s, um, about 90% of elders were living with their corporate families. Now that's not the case today, but if being in this extended corporate family works so well, why did we seek that kind of change to look for a different structure? Around 1950 um, and like 1965 in that time frame, nuclear families were really rising to fame. The divorce rates were way lower and fertility rates were way higher and it was really appealing. Um, but over those years, there was this almost unsettling version of being together that was happening. People were bashing those that were choosing not to be married and not to have kids claiming that they were things like sick and immoral. Um, so during this idea of a perfect family, um, instead of encouraging marriage, they were bashing those that weren't participating. And because of all this anger, there are a lot of historians that argue that the nuclear family window was a weird time in history or even a fluke. But I mean, was it? So let's look at the benefits of a nuclear family. So obviously you have the benefit of stability um, with two parents, especially from a kid's point of view, you have two different people you can go to compared to just one or none. Um, it also helps with the emotional well-being of not only the kids, but also the parents, um, having everyone together. Um, there, the parents are physically able to be there, um, which also helps a lot. And because there are usually two incomes, there's less financial stress, less burden of money. Um, there are also way more opportunities, not only for the kids, but also for the parents when it comes to being in a nuclear family, because you go to other events with the people in your family, um, like school events or like work events, etc. So what are some of the disadvantages? Obviously, main disadvantage is you have to take care of a child or children you're responsible for them, you're responsible for their well-being, how they grow up, how they become, the citizen that they are falls onto you for the most part. So that is a, a major disadvantage, having that kind of responsibility for yourself. So let's look at the non-nuclear family. So obviously the main benefit is the independence and the ability to do as you please. 
um, when you don't have children, and especially if you don't have a spouse, you have what much less commitment and way less responsibility and, you know, kind of get to relax a little bit more. And this is really appealing short term, especially for younger people. Younger people are selfish and when given the option, almost always choose themselves. So um, disadvantages would be um, when you get older, there's no one to care for you, no one to look out for you, kind of assist you. Um, none of your genetics get to be passed on, your name, nothing like that. Um, which, I mean, some people, the idea of procreation isn't all that. So that's another reason that not nuclear can be appealing to younger is not having to deal with all that. So let's compare joint family versus nuclear versus no family. So in your joint or extended family, you have relatives like grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, all that jazz living together. Um, usually under the same house and with this with more adults there's more collective earning and that means that usually the financial stress is a little bit less because there's so many different incomes especially if there's like um, older people that are retired living there you know um, on top of that you also have a, a stronger support system especially as kids, you have not only your parents to go to for advice, but also your aunt, your uncle, your grandparents, your cousins, whoever else is living with you. Um, obviously, the downfall to being in the extended family is there's less freedom because there are so many people in the household. If you're the adult, you're more likely to get stuck watching the kids or babysitting. Um, and this also can cause a little bit more tension in the house and distractions when it comes to things like school and work, just because there's so much going on. In a nuclear family, there's less earning than joint because there's just two parents, but there is more freedom because again, less people in the household. Um, but there also is less support when you're home, less people to turn to, less people to go to when you kind of need that uh, however, you have more of the opportunity to be clear minded when you're home because there are less distractions. And then last but not least, the single family unit, there is no support in the home. There's no one for you to turn to physically and ask for advice. You have to look, you have to go out for that. Um, but there is unlimited freedom and less responsibility. Um, but that also comes with less income because it's just you. So pros and cons to everything. So what can we conclude? What really is the best option? So with all this research gathered, all this research gathered, we can decide that having a nuclear family structure does have the best probability of success when it comes to raising children. But those that decide it isn't for them have technology and societal advancements to help them compared to even 10 years ago. Um, an example would be gay parents. With the changes in society and how we view everything, there have been options where same-sex couples can not only be married and have kids, but they can even have blood-related children now um, that are raised under the same roof by the same parents. Um, another would be single parents. Even though it's still hard. There are a lot more resources available to help single parents compared to before. So what are the recommendations? While all versions of a family do have good and bad aspects, I personally will always recommend being a part of a nuclear family. Like I said, the short term appeal of being free is very intriguing, especially when you're younger but the long-term really does show otherwise. Um, in your nuclear family, there's less risk for being alone, um, especially when you get older and you need that kind of support and that help um, to get you through. Um, there's also the not being able to pass on your genetics and your name to future generations um, when, you don't, when you're not part of a nuclear family. So like I said, I will always um, recommend being a part of a nuclear family. 
these are my references. And again, my name is Kendall Taubert, and I thank you for taking the time to listen and hear what I have to say.